All right, we are live. Welcome, everybody. This is going to be awesome. This is going to be awesome. My name is Diane Rose Solomon, and I'm the founder of Animal Magic Films. Here we go. And thank you for joining us for the 17th interview in the Science and Magic of the Human Animal Bond interview series. Be sure to like this video, subscribe in YouTube, and please join our Facebook group, The Science and Magic of the Human Animal Bond. We will be exploring many of the ways that animals help people and people help animals. It's a both and conversation where we all benefit from this bond. And I know I've benefited immensely from my relationship with my pets years ago from a surprise therapy dog visit in the hospital. I also experienced great joy watching other people heal from their interactions with animals. And I am also in awe of non-companion animals like wild animals, farm animals, and more. But now we get to hear from you, people who are making our relationships with our pets, our communities, and our natural environment just a little bit better. So please welcome my guests today, the founders of Deity Animal Rescue, Ellen Ballandante and Lindsay Bird. Welcome, ladies. It's so Hi, nice to see you. you. Thank you for having us. We're so happy to be here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Let me just hide this goodie so we can see Deity Animal Rescue. Deity. Oh, my goodness. I, we were just talking about this. No way. So, so let me read a little bit about your official bio, and then I have a lot of questions for you. So Deity Animal Rescue is a nonprofit rescue organization based in Los Angeles. It is our passion, your passion, and mission to rescue, rehabilitate, and place stray, neglected, and shelter dogs into loving, responsible, and committed homes. We do not discriminate on age, breed, or ease of placement. Rather, we choose dogs based on temperament and potential to be wonderful companions. We adhere to a comprehensive adoption process, which includes finding the best possible match for each dog and performing home checks. Our mission is to educate and empower people of all ages as to how they can make a difference in the lives of animals in their communities. We target the importance of pet sterilization, animal welfare, and why it's a good idea to adopt from a shelter or rescue rather than buy from a breeder. Lindsay joined Ellen in her efforts when a major health scare made her reevaluate life and the gift of health and happiness. Dogs served a key role in her recovery and she strives to share the healing power of dogs with others. Dogs saved her, so it's only right that she saved dogs. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Together, these two ladies created a jewelry line to help fund the rescue. At DD Jewels, 100% of the proceeds are donated to the rescue to help an animal in need. And these wonderful women who we're going to hear from shortly hope that people around the world will contribute to their efforts by joining their tribe, wearing their jewels, and saving a life. So that is fantastic. So now I want to hear about Deity Animal Rescue. What inspired you to get started? We heard a little bit about how Lindsay got inspired, but yeah, tell us- Yeah, it definitely starts with Ellen. Okay, let's go. So it was probably 2006 or seven, I think it was right when I got involved on Facebook. Um, prior to that, <laughs> My senior pit bull is sitting here talking to us because we're not paying attention to her. So I don't know. Attention to her. I don't know if you can hear her or not. I can hear, her, but that's okay. I got pit bulls snoring her. over there, so yeah. I'll be petting her off camera. Yeah, she's telling her story in case it is. But um, yeah, I had always uh, volunteered at shelters and for rescues, and in 2007, my human child was born. And I didn't have the free time that I once had um, to go and hold leashes on a Sunday or you know anything like that. So I had been designing jewelry for a couple of years, was in labor, shipping orders. And when I started to work again, when my son um, was taking a nap, that's kind of how the jewelry was born instead of doing the um, volunteering, I was monetarily giving back a portion of the proceeds from the jewelry line that I had always had. And then Facebook being what it was at the time, I think I got on for a high school reunion. Um, and all of a sudden I'm getting tagged on all of these urgent shelter dogs, mm -hmm. mostly Baldwin Park, which is here in LA. And I would share, I would um, donate to getting the dog rescued. And after a while, 
I was transporting, I was, you know, fostering, I was figuring out like, you know, who, what kind of family that I knew might work with this dog, onesie twosies dogs here and there. And then after a while, things picked up a lot and I was just, you know, doing more rescue than I was actually jewelry um, with my son in a car seat in the back. Oh, wow. And and yeah, in 2017, my father got sick and I was back and forth to Pittsburgh and I opened up my DMs one day and there's an email <laughs> or a DM from this sweet human who was like, I know we don't know each other, but I love what you're doing and I want to help. Wow. And the timing could not have been more perfect because I was gone so much at the time. Lindsay came in, took over all of the dogs that we had in foster, um, you know, all the, the medical, all of the running around. She did everything while I was gone. And sure enough, you know, it was at that it's point. Made in heaven. It was. She's trying to say it's a match. Yes. <laughs> can I tell your story? Yeah, she so can, she tells them better than I do. Let me get closer so I can tell the story. <laughs> so in twenty end of twenty seventeen, my father had just passed away, I'm and sorry. I'm I'm sitting. Thank you. I'm sitting in Pittsburgh with my mom on the sofa. Lindsay texts. We had a dog named Alan at the time who we pulled from the Downey Shelter, who we were obsessed with. I mean, we're obsessed. We get obsessed with most most of all of our dogs, but this one was definitely our heart. And she said to me, my sister is going to take Alan to his neuter surgery tomorrow. For whatever reason, the shelter wasn't able to neuter him. I think he had kennel cough mm -hmm. at the time. So they deferred the neuter. So we uh, were following through and he was supposed to go get his surgery. And I said, okay, I didn't think much about it. I said, that's fine. Amanda can take him. Are you okay? And there was a pause. And Lindsay said, well, I've been having these headaches, so Mike made me go get an MRI, and I have a brain tumor. Yay, yay. And I'm going in tomorrow for emergency surgery. And I'm sitting here with the phone like this. My mo She's on speaker. My mother and I, our jaws are on the floor. And, you know, it was, she's worrying about Alan's neuter surgery and has to prepare herself for brain surgery in the morning. So cut to, thank God. All good. All good, six weeks later, tumor was benign. She's recouping at home and I get a text from her saying, can we have coffee? And we had been in touch, but you know, this was the first I, she was ready to do something. So we went and had coffee and she looked at me across the table and she said, I am not passionate about my work anymore. What I what I was to with a stylist. Um, I want to come on board and I want to do this. Let's blow this up. Let's do it. Let's save these lives. And I looked at her. We looked at each other. And at the time, you know, there was no money. There was just dogs that needed saving. And I said, "Well, are you ready for that? Like, we can't pay ourselves." And she goes, "I don't care. Let's do it." And since then. We just, things started cranking and cranking because there were two of us and our team keeps growing and people have actual job titles now and we have payroll and we have money coming in to help our mission, which is, you know, to have an impact on all the animals, whether they be in the shelter, whether they be our community's pets that, you know, during this pandemic, especially a lot of people have gone unhoused and don't have they've chosen to go on house because they don't want to let go of their pets right and those pets need medical they need services they need stay and neuter they need microchips so you know we've kind of pivoted in the pandemic and added the underserved community to what we do we service there's a lot of free fridges and pantries around town that we provide um pet supplies and services for. 
on a weekly basis. So that's that's the animal. <laughs> yeah, in a nutshell. In a nutshell. So that's can... amazing. So that's here's my exciting. here's my next question for you. This, first of all, it's an amazing story, and it, it is amazing when people come together like they're supposed to, right? Because right. you two seem like you've just known each other forever. Yeah, and we're it's, sisters. Yeah, it's like it's like this beautiful sisterly bond, you know, and um, it's just amazing that it's only a few short years. But tell me a little bit, you know, what what it was like before the pandemic, like what it's like, you know, in normal life when running a rescue group, you know, going to the shelters, you know, versus what it's like now during the pandemic. How, how has it shifted and do you see it going back to the other way? What What are your sort of experience and thoughts? Uh, there have been some significant changes in the way that things are run, and it took us some time to figure out how that was going to go. So before the pandemic, we did, Ellen and I love to be in the trenches. We like to go to the shelters. We like to meet the dogs. We like to make the connections with the people, with the animals, with the adopters. And once quarantine hit and that wasn't, going to happen anymore. We had to, the shelters closed. The shelters closed. We couldn't do face-to-face -face meet and greets. We couldn't have, uh, you know, do in-person home checks, like all of these things that our business is based on, excuse us, um, had to be rethought. So as we started to do that and get a hang of the way things were now, we did see a silver lining in the pandemic, which was people were home, people needed company, people found themselves more productive when they had a dog around or my favorite is that the dog keeps people active and they said I don't even get to see the sunshine unless I have a dog around who I'm walking or you know get exercise so we found that many people were available and willing to take dogs in need into their homes and give them a safe place to decompress and come out of their shell meanwhile people who had always wanted to adopt found themselves with the time and resources to be able to do so and really help a dog come into their home in uh, a manner that wasn't like we have two days on this weekend before I have to get back to work on Monday. So um, yeah, it, in aspects like that, it there was a silver lining. Um, I don't think things are going to go back to exactly the way that they were in rescue. It's going to be a different process, I think, of, of going to the shelters. I think that the shelter system is probably changed forever. So during the pandemic, it went from it being open and public to where people can walk in, walk the kennels, meet the dogs, to now they have to have a full appointment. You have to know which dogs you're going in for. Uh, there's really not like, you know, walking around and getting to know everybody. And I think that that's, that's extreme. I hope that that's not gonna be the case forever because I do think that dogs need to be seen to be safe. Sure, yeah. Um, but I do see, uh, like a, what is it like a it's, it's become such a streamlined process that I do see everyone kind of moving in a different direction in terms of just the process of bringing a dog into your home so how how does the process work so so okay so in the past you would go to the shelter and have dogs you know that you chose because I've been following you and you have always have plenty of dogs. I mean, there's, it's like you get, what do you get a phone call? Like we've got a situation here and you guys just, yeah. is, 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 tell, tell us some of the stories that, you know, of recently, because some of them have been amazing. So we have a real good one from recent. Yeah. The, the RV. Yeah. So <laughs> this is kind of one scenario. Um, somebody will reach out to us with a situation with, you know, dogs and um, the specific situation, again, because of the pandemic and people are, um, you know, forced to live out of their RV or, you know, they lose their home for whatever reason. This situation was a woman living out of her RV for the last few months. Um, she had probably started out with two or three dogs that were not sterilized and um, from lack of resources and they started multiplying. Mm, and of course. Yeah. The day we got there, there were probably 20, there were 21 total dogs. Yeah. 21 total dogs wow. who were pregnant for pregnant moms. So initially she was, petrified you know she thought we were 
animal control and her notion of animal control is that they're going to come and euthanize the dogs. Oh, yeah. As, yeah. And, you know, I, I think, you know, as soon as she realized, or we explained to her um, that we were rescue, that we were here to help her and we would be able to place these dogs into loving homes, the tears of Aww. fear turned into tears of joy, literally. And we were able that day to fill up two big crates in the back of our car, uh, 18 dogs total. Um, like Lindsay said, four of them were pregnant moms who gave birth a week to two weeks later. Um, to our village's credit, that same day, we had no idea we were going to pull away with 18 dogs. We had no idea. So on the way back from the RV, we're texting every foster that we know and saying, can you help? And lo and behold, by the end of the day, we can you shall receive 18 dogs in wow. foster. were placed in foster by the end of the day. And those fosters ran by our vet to get them vaccinated and checked out you know i mean like we pitch our like it doesn't even seem real to think back and it was the beginning of february so like it's unbelievable what you know, like goodness comes from humans when in a, situ a dire situation like that yeah um even one of the moms who was actually she was uh we were fostering here at my house she ended up in needing an emergency C-section. Thank God that we have the resources of an emergency vet who I had on text and said, um, I don't think this is right. And she's like, bring her here now. And this is at 11 o'clock at night. And lo and behold, it's midnight and she's having a C-section and we have four healthy puppies. And I'm home by 2 a.m. with mom and four healthy puppies um, that otherwise would not have she, she would have died in childbirth and the puppies would have died too. So, you know, it's just, we feel so blessed to have the people behind us who will help in situations like that. Like we, you know, financially, if we needed money for something, um, typically we'll post about it and we try and be very transparent about exactly what's happening with the animal, what the situation is and what we are needing and our followers our villages you know they provide they're, always there for they're there it, it's amazing because i've you know as i said I, I follow you and i see when you bring in a dog that's in need it needs some medical something or whatever else you, the needs are and you post you know here's what we need and this is exactly what it's going for and you see people i donated i donated i donated i donated but you've built up this this following over the past few years i mean just because people are, they get to see the work that you do. I mean, maybe I'm putting words in your mouth, but I mean, I watch you, you know, I, I believe it was Ellen, you weren't on camera, but I think it was you. It was about four or five, six months ago and you were at the vet, something, was, oh, it was a little tiny black dog. And you're just crying. Oh, oh. Plum, probably. Plum, it was Plum. We had Parvo and she, we still can't believe she pulled through, but she yeah, did. Yeah, but you were crying. You were crying and, and you could just feel your heart through there. And of course, anybody else who's watching this is like, look, look what this woman is doing. Look what this team of women are doing. And it's like, if I can throw in five, 10, 15, 20 dollars and it's gonna make a difference, happy to do it. Happy well, to do it. Thank you. And I feel like, you know, Lindsay and I, like our thing when we go home at night we love like being able to look at each other because and, and say to each other, well, you know, summing up the day, at least we don't have any puppies in, at the vet with Parvo because like that's the stuff that keeps you up at night. That's, you know, like those are the, those are the, the stories that like really get you. And I feel like people who follow us are following us for that animal content for that. Hopefully, you know, they want to see um, the underdog win type of thing. And we're going to do everything that we can to make that happen. But at the end of the day, we are fueled by the people behind us. Because right. without them, we can't do anything. 
And it's always been something that's very important to both of us, I think, on the other side of social media from being consumers and watching things like this happen is transparency is so important. We are very transparent about what we need, where it's going. And I think when people watch our stories or whatever we're posting on Instagram, they know that their dollars made a difference in that dog's life. And we try to relay that as much as possible. We literally could not do this work without the people who support us. And yes, there's a lot of crying and there's a lot of heartbreak, but it's not just us doing it. Right. Our whole team is supporting us and we couldn't do it without them. Yeah. You know, there's something that you were just talking about because, you know, as you know, my whole thing is the human animal bond, right? So on one hand, you might look and think, well, you're helping the animals by, by rescuing them. And then on the other hand, you're helping the people who you're placing with the animals. But you're also like, you know, the story that you just mentioned, Alan, about the woman in the RV, like first it was tears of fear and then it was tears of joy. Look at the connection that you made with this stranger yeah. who you were, you know, it just felt like, you, do you want to talk a little bit about this a little bit? And it's, it's, thank you for picking up on that because I actually came back to Lindsay to tell her what was happening with this RV that I was, you know, I was filling her in about this story. And this was before, this was the day before we went back to rescue the dogs. We actually had contact with her the day before and um, told her that we would be back. She said, tomorrow I will give you eight, six dogs, six dogs. Six dogs. So I came back, yeah, so I came back, I said, okay, I came back and told Lindsay the story about this woman and I was crying and this time I was not crying for the dogs because I knew at the end of the day, the dogs were gonna have a better life than this woman could ever dream of, okay? I was crying for her because I felt her heart, her pain. Can you imagine like living in a little RV, it wasn't she was a big RV. She yeah, was she got, overwhelmed. She ha, she lived every second of every day being overwhelmed in this RV by yapping chihuahuas. Over 20 of them. Yeah. <laughs> and her commitment to them to keep them alive. And she would feed her dogs before she fed herself. There were big Thanks. things dog food in her RV. And I know that, you know, I, the brand that she was buying wasn't cheap. Um, I think it's important for us to make that impact. Like the dogs, yes, we're going to take the dogs. We're going to help them uh, get their medical care they need and place them in the forever homes. But these situations don't necessarily just occur be when someone has all of the resources to do right. what they can. And this woman started with her three dogs who she fully want, she wanted to sterilize them. She didn't yeah. have the resources to get that done. And it turned into this overwhelming situation. So we knew when we were rescuing these dogs, like there was an aspect of help needed by the human as well. We gave her resources to um, people who will help her, and we specialize in helping the dogs, but we connected her with people who help people. And we, she's legally allowed to keep three dogs in her residence. So we made sure to supply them with the food, the bed, the vaccines, we got them spayed and neutered to ensure that this is not something that's going to happen again. Yeah. But it's not like, you can't just go in, pull the dogs out of a situation and be like, all is good. Like yeah, there's, right. there's a tide, there's a ripple effect from all of these things that are happening. And it's important to us to see it as a full picture. And if I may add, I just want to circle back on the spay and neuter aspect of it. Um, that is another thing that we just have been, I mean, there are the, we're now up to 40 RV chihuahuas because there were 18 plus uh, the moms had 17 more puppies. Plus there were a couple that were left in the RV. Um, Stand Up for Pitts Foundation. I don't know if you're familiar with them. They offered, Rebecca called the next day and she goes, I know they're not pit bulls, but they're going to be honorary pygmy pit bulls and we're going to grant you the money to spay and neuter every single one of them. Wow. Um, and at the time she didn't even know that we'd end up with 40, but <laughs> surprise. surprise. <laughs> yeah. So the first round of the chihuahuas have all been spayed. The ones that are back in the RV are spayed and neutered. Um, and then when the puppies are old enough, they will 
get spayed and neutered as well. And we're still in touch with the woman. Yes, and the woman will text me every other day, I think it is, and she speaks only Spanish. So I'm sitting here like with my Spanish, English to Spanish translator, and that's how we communicate. That's but amazing. It, it's all hearts. It's all thank gracias. It's all, she is so like, her, her heart is just so grateful for all the help that she received. And these dogs who came out of that RV, like chihuahuas are tend to be a little neurotic <laughs> to begin with, but not, these, to, be not to be judged. <laughs> they have, they're all blossoming into these wonderful dogs. Who, That's amazing. That's amazing. There's, there's, on their faces. It's great. There's just so much humanity here. And it's amazing that it's, the dogs that brought together all of this humanity from, you know, this woman really having a big heart to begin with. She wanted to help the dogs, right? To you guys, you know, supporting her the way that she needed to support, you know, supporting the dogs. And then this other foundation coming in and supporting you. It, it just, there's so much synergy here. And it's, it's the connection through the animals, but it's, it really, in the end of the day, it's a lot of people helping people too, which is really important. Yeah, that's really important to us too, is always knowing that we're not in this alone. There are other rescue organizations and it's, I say sisterhood because it is primarily a woman run industry, mm -hmm. but everyone helps and can help each other. And we're all in this for the same reason, which is to save lives and you know make it just a better place for a dog to live here on this planet. And uh, it's important to us to maintain those relationships with the other women, the other groups, the other people who have the same goals as us. Amazing. Well, you know, before we wrap up, let me just ask a couple of questions. In order to, you know, support your your organization, you sell jewelry, and mm -hmm. and also donations. Correct? Is there, is that how you guys stay supported? Uh, these days, um, the jewelry design is. Um, in you know a very much a shortage it's kind of, mainly comes when we're stressed about a sick dog or something and we need a creative relief yeah <laughs> we're like, let's make a let's make a necklace but you know we don't really have the time anymore we are definitely a um full-time plus rescue and you know in rescue the hours aren't real specific it's kind of all day long all night long so the jewelry these days is, um, you know, we have our we have our retail store that's kind of been closed because of COVID, and the um, jewelry's online and we fill it as the orders come in. Um, made to order. Made to order. Whereas it used to be, the store was open and people would come and shop, but now it's it, the majority of it is online. Right. But our store is 100% uh, of the proceeds from our store goes back to our rescue. You can also donate via Venmo, PayPal, Zelle, any way you want to give us money, we can take it. And people can find you. I just posted your website, ddogsandgoods.com, and people can not only shop there, but they can also donate from there. You can yeah. donate. You can see our available dogs. You can find ways to be involved. You can see our events around the area if you are in LA. Um, you can even find our contact just to call and say hi. Yeah. And uh, and if you're not in LA, I encourage everybody to find you on Instagram because really you're constantly posting amazing stories, amazing photos, amazing videos, and it just shows the work that you do. And there's so much heart in it. And it's really quite amazing and quite beautiful. And, you know, as you said earlier, like, you know, you want to be transparent. And the more people get to know you, the more they're just like, oh, like, I completely trust this group. And I'm happy to, you know, I'm happy to, to donate. And, and that share. makes a lot. That was our goal. Well, great. So thank you, Ellen. Thank you, Lindsay. This is amazing. I could be talking to you for hours and hours because as you know animal rescue is near and dear to my heart that's sort of where i got started from not on the ground like you are but you i really am such awe of the work that you do day in and day out i've i've been more of an educator and it's just i'm in awe of the work that you do so thank, thank you, you for so all the work much. that you do it's really quite amazing so thank you for being here today it's been amazing i, I would love to talk for longer but sadly our time's Go up on. <laughs> we're around. You know where yep. to You'll come back again. Yeah. So before before we go, um, just a few little announcements. Um, if you are watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to um, our YouTube channel. 
And this is our Facebook group, the Science and Magic of the Human-Animal Bond. And if you have a story about a any kind of human-animal bond story, either for our website or you believe that it might be something interesting for an interview like this, you can email me. Oh, let's see. Email me is this. Da -da -da -da. Um, and then you can also visit um, animalmagicfilms.com to learn more. You can join our community and find out when we have more films coming out and more interviews like this one. So I'm going to put this back to you so people can see Dee Dee Dogs and Goods. Thank you so much for being here again, Ellen and Lindsay. It's been such a pleasure. Us. So fun. Thank and you. thank you for the incredible life saving work that you do. And thank you to everybody who's been watching um, and spending time with us today. We really appreciate it. And we will be back again in a few weeks with another fabulous guest. So thanks again. Thank you. Bye. Bye.